and welcome to the first official tutorial from me, the Economics Dude. Today we'll be talking about the ISLM curve, which is a microeconomic model used to explain the fiscal and monetary movements of the economy. However, why have me just explain it to you when we can see it in action? So let's take it away. We start off this tutorial by discussing the IS curve, where the IS equals investment equals savings, or essentially the equilibrium in the goods market. This is denoted by a downward sloping IS curve, where the higher the interest rate, I, the lower the quantity demanded, Q. Given that we have I on the y-axis and Q on the x-axis, we have that the higher the interest rate, the lower the quantity consumed, hence why we have a downward sloping IS curve. Next, we come to the equation for our IS curve. Here we have Z being the total demand, C being the total level of consumption, Y being the total income, T being the total tax rate, I being the amount of investments, and G being the amount of government spending. The LM curve represents the equilibrium in the financial markets, which essentially describes LM being liquidity, preference, and money supply. Now we come to the equation for the LM curve. Our equation being where we have M, the nominal money stock, divided by P, the price level, which would equal our nominal income times by L, the real demand for money, which is a function of I, the nominal interest rate, where M over P giving us our real money demand. While we have discussed the IS and LM curves, is this enough for full marks in the exam? No. But don't worry, to get full marks in the exam, you must label your axes, where first of all we have I0 being the initial interest rate level, then we go down to the x-axis where we have Q0 being the initial quantity demanded. This overall gives us E, our equilibrium value, where IS and L meet. But how do we derive the IS curve? First, we draw the diagram for the goods market above the diagram for the ISLM curves, where Z equals the total aggregate demand, Q being the total quantity demanded. So first, we draw a 45 degree line representing a one-to-one -one relationship between Z and Q. The next step is to draw the total demand curve being flatter than the actual 45 degree line given by ZZ. This intersection must then equal the equilibrium value for the ISLM curve, and of course denoted by the initial value C0. As you can see, the intersection of this curve gives us our total equilibrium for the goods market, where of course we denote the equilibrium value by E. Next, we derived the LM curve which is given as the equilibrium of the financial market, where we have I on the y-axis giving the interest rate, and M over P being the total money stock on the x-axis. So first we begin by drawing a vertical line representing the money supply in the economy, which does not change. Then we have a downward sloping line being the total money demand, where the higher the interest rate, the lower the money stock. The intersection of these two curves gives us our equilibrium in the financial market, where of course this intersection must equal the total equilibrium in the ISLM curves. And of course we finish off by deriving M over P zero, which is the initial value for the total money stock. But suppose the government enacts fiscal expansion through raising government spending. This would actually higher the demand curve from ZZ0 to ZZ1. Of course, this is denoted at the top through Z1, our second aggregate demand value. However, as consumers actually increase their aggregate demand, we see that they also increase the demand for money. So here we go down towards the LM curve 
which then intersects at the money supply line. This increase in money demand would shift the MD curve down from MD0 to MD1, also giving us a higher interest rate value. From an increase in the interest rate I, we find that it also becomes more expensive to borrow and thus investments decrease. From a decrease in investments, this would mean that demand would shift downwards from ZZ1 to ZZ2, a lower demand level. A fall in demand would also mean that less money is actually demanded in the economy. And so, from going towards the LM curve and back towards the money supply curve, money demand shifts to the left from MD1 to MD2, thus giving us a lower interest rate. Here we see that the fall in investments crowds out the increase in government spending. This is known as the crowding out effect. However, it is noted that even though we have a fall in investments, we still have a greater value than what we had at the initial rate. Through a higher level of demand, we see that we have a higher position on the goods market. This shifts IS from IS0 to IS1. We then draw our new equilibrium rate at E1 up from ES0. This would mean a higher level in the interest rate I and thus a higher level in Q quantity. We also see that there is nothing more to do in the financial market, so we finish off by denoting this higher level of demand by ZZ2. And there you go folks, that is how you explain the fiscal expansion. A job well done. Expansionary fiscal policy is a big feature of Keynesian economics and was also a popular policy instrument implemented by Barack Obama. Typically, this is done in times of recession to encourage job creation and stop falling output and a range of social problems. This stimulus saved the U.S. car industry and is argued to have stabilized the economy. But of course, the economics dude is not politically partisan, so it should be known that the Republicans are not for stimulus politics despite George Bush passing the first stimulus bill before Obama. They say that markets should settle themselves and that the government should make cuts in public services and government programs, an example of free market economics. But the choice on who has done a better job is yours. Do you think that Obama's stimulus bill is the better option, or do you think the Republicans' more free market economics is a better option? Alternatively, would somebody else have done a better job? Ron Paul? Seriously? Two. And the Oscar for special effects goes to. But anyway, finishing off, if you want to see any future videos on any future issues, then please comment down below. And of course, please like and subscribe. So, until next time, I'm the Economics Dude. You've been awesome. See ya.